in this video we are going to sink into a deep trance and send our non-corporeal bodies flying across the spirit world. It's time to engage our shamanistic tendencies and look into the haunting world of spirits. Welcome to the world of the animist. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome to the long-awaited final School of Magic rules video for Mithras. Yes, this is probably the School of Magic that I get requested the most to do a video on. And I must admit, and I'll be honest with you, I've been avoiding it for some time. Now, this is not because I don't like the school of animists, quite the opposite. If I was lucky enough to play Mithras instead of GMing it, then I would definitely play an animist. The reason I've been avoiding it for so long is that I don't actually, or we don't actually have an animist in our campaign, meaning that I don't have to engage with the rules or haven't at all. However, I knew that you were all waiting for this video, so I decided to just get straight in there, create my own animist, and then try to work out the rules as I go along. Now, before I go into the video, I am sure that there are probably a huge amount of expert animists out there whose fingers are poised, itching, ready to type those keyboards saying that I've got everything wrong etc etc so in order to preempt this please do tell me if I have things wrong and I can recreate the video or or put sort of like edits into it at a later date but if you are saying that I'm wrong please could you give me the correct answer nothing to do with homebrew rules please just straight from the core rule book okay then Shall we get on with it? Now, one of the things that I found while reading up about the Animist is that it's quite complex and there's several different areas um, that I can actually engage with. So I have a plan. This first video, I'm going to talk about the culture or the cults about Animist and their major skills. Then I'm going to do another video about spirits. And then I'm going to do the final um, video about bringing everything together and how the animus can work in your campaign. So first up, what is an animist? Now, according to page 134 of the Cole rule book, animis animism is a magic which is worked through communion with spirits and the spirit world. It is the magic of shaman and shamans and spirit walkers. Their powers do not come from deities or old dusty tomes. They they actually come from the spirits that inhabit the spirit world and occasionally manifest into the mundane. So when I started to think more about animus, I had to almost like fit them into my existing campaign. I sometimes see a conflict between the world of the theist and that of the animist. Both have beliefs and even within religion, spirits actually exist. Theists allow passage of these spirits to life after death. Animists are sometimes seen as the more primitive version of the theist and the religion, especially since most characters come from a primitive culture. There is no option for the priest profession in the primitive culture at all. So it's more likely to be a, a shaman or if you're from the other side of a pond, the shaman. But Although priests do not exist in primitive cultures, um, according to the rule book, shamans or shamans exist in all cultures. So before embarking on animus within your campaign, I think it's really important to have a clear understanding of how they fit into the campaign and the relationship, if any, with the other schools of magic. Now, for me, 
I see primitive cultures encouraging um, shamans as a religion with everything within their culture having spirits, not only their ancestors, but plants, animals, even rocks and places. People from more cultured backgrounds have the option to go forward to the afterlife dictated by the religion while well, animals etc remain as spirits on the spirit world or just quite simply dissipate of course there is a reason there or there has to be a reason for a spirit to remain in the spirit world otherwise the spirit world is just going to be completely packed unless it's actually infinitely it gets very mind-blowing anyway if they don't progress to an afterlife then they will still be in the spirit world unless the spirit world is the af afterlife now if you want to just ignore everything I say and find out more information about animists and their cultures and cults, you can find those in the core rule book starting at the bottom of page 131. These brotherhood cults are so important to develop within the Mithras rule um, set. Um, just like theists and sorcerers and mystics, it's really important that you invest time into these brotherhoods. Remember there are no levels in Mithras, so progression through the brotherhoods, cults or whatever, provides the animist or other spellcaster with access to different skills and possible um, different spirits. Now, when developing the brotherhoods or cults, um, diversity is definitely the key. Each um, little brotherhood or cult that might be each tradition from which might be a family within a primitive tribe or a group of hermits um, who live out in the, um, in the mountainous reason, regions, each might possess their own sort of like spirits, beliefs, rituals and as a guide on page 132 there is an idea about what each brotherhood should actually um, have access to. Now these are that they should have number one a direct access to 1d3 plus three specific types of spirits which are friendly to their tradition. So this might be ancestor spirits or nature spirits or elemental spirits. More about spirits in the next video. They also should have the knowledge of how to locate a further 1d3 types of spirit which are neutral with regard to their tradition. So for example if I were work, was working with a primitive culture who lived up in the mountains then there might be um, the knowledge of how to locate um, airy spirits, spirits of air or spirits of um, raptors that float on the thermals etc. And then finally they should have at least one enemy or competing cult who has its own allied spirits and being treated as actively hostile towards the tradition. Now I think this really allows for a huge amount of role playing and campaign development, you know, within the storyline. I think it would be really interesting how animists fit into cultures or campaigns where theists are the main sort of like worshippers. And I'd be really interested to know how you put animists into your campaign. So do add them in the comments below. So once you have identified how the animists will fit into your campaign, it's, start, it's time to look at their skills. But before we get talking about the skills which animists use, please consider liking, comment and subscribing to this channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras as well as actual play sessions and personal blogs. I also produce videos about GMing so why not subscribe and press that bell button so you get a notification when my next video goes live. Also if you would like to provide some additional support if you know what I mean then the link to my Patreon account is in the comments below. Also 
if you're interested in any of the adventures I run in the actual play videos and would like to see a bit of the behind the scenes video about how I created the scenarios, then you can please have a look at my adventure reflection videos on this channel or pop it out along to my webpage inwills.co.uk when you can um, get the adventure notes from the adventures for a small donation or if you don't want to donate anything then just have them for free okay back to animists and their skills so animists have two unique skills for their school of magic and they need to invest both time and training into these these are trance and binding now trance starts off as the sum of the animist constitution and power this skill allows the animist to view and enter into the spirit world anyone with a trance skill can absorb observe spirits but this is just the basic ability once the character has embarked on the role of being on the road of being a shaman or animist then this skill allows them to do a lot more than just observe initially the trance skill allows animists to see spirits within their power as meters radius if that makes sense anything involving the trance however does take time the animist cannot just flick their senses between the mundane and the spirit world at will they need to invest time in the preparation now there is a table on page 131 which provides all the time periods as the animist achieves a higher rank within the brotherhood or cult then the time needed to go into the trance becomes less uh, an example of this would be a follower takes one hour of preparation before they can observe spirits in the spirit world while a high shaman takes a single action to switch their senses as well as allowing the animist to observe this skill also allows them to converse with spirits project their own spiritual body into the spirit world and can even eventually at higher ranks allow them to drag souls from their mundane players into the spirit world with them power indeed and a great opportunity for spirit plane adventures Okay, so the second skill that animists have is called binding. Now, binding starts off as the sum of the animist power and charisma. This skill allows the animist to force or encourage a spirit to do the animist's bidding. This has a range of applications. The skill can bind spirits into fetishes, to places or creatures, persuade a spirit to perform a single deed or service or to summon a known spirit to the animist's physical location and finally the binding skill is used to engage in spirit combat more about this in the next video when we get into spirits the largest spirit that an animist can bind um, cannot exceed three times the critical range of the binding skill now the crit remember that the critical range is 10 range is 10 percent of a skill so an animist who has a binding skill of 50 percent they could only be in a, they could only control spirits up to 15 um, power now the binding skill is also a combat skill which is used in spirit combat and it also dictates the amount of damage the animus can inflict now there is a table on page 131 that shows the skill and the damage and now if you are not an animist if you're not an animist at all uh, with a binding skill then mundanes have to use their willpower skill and that's it for the first video about animist in the next video in this animist series i have to remember to say to tell youtube that this is a series i'll have a look at spirits in general and then finally i'll link the two together to explain where animists get their power from so don't forget 
to press that subscribe button and bell so you get a notification when my next video goes live and remember if you're interested in playing Mithras or already play the game don't forget that there is a monthly podcast on the rule set which you can find by searching any of your favorite podcasting apps or web pages it's called Mithras Matters as you can imagine I'm the host but there's a lot of interviews from other people including the get one of the games designers Lawrence Whitaker all the other links to my social media and content are down below so please do support the channel and myself by going and checking them out okay so until next time I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-earned special happy Mithras everyone see ya